In this video, we're going to learn how to rationalize the denominator. Uh, this is section 6.5 of Al Grosch's book, Developmental Math 2. In this first example, um, there's just a review of Pythagorean theorem. Um, it really isn't that relevant to rationalizing the denominator until we get down to the answer. Um, yeah, and you can read through all of this what the author is telling you, uh, but he gets an answer here of x equals 1 over the square root of 2. Um, there's this math rule that we don't leave radicals in the denominator of fractions because it causes an irrational number in the denominator. So we have a process called rationalizing the denominator, which allows us to get rid of this radical in the denominator of the fraction. So we're going to go to the next page and look at that process. This process shows you that if you have, this is the answer that was from the previous page, the Pythagorean theorem question. Um, the whole premise is uh, if you multiply the numerator and the denominator of a fraction times the same thing, this is just another name for one. Any fraction that's the same on the top and the bottom is just another name for one. So you're not changing the value of this fraction, you're just changing the form. This is a similar process that we use when we find a common denominator to add and subtract fractions. But if you look at what happens here in the denominator now, we have the square root of 2. We multiply it times itself. The square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 4, which is a perfect square, which we can simplify and we will. But since you did that in the denominator to get rid of the square root of 2, then you have to do the same thing in the numerator. So 1 times the square root of 2 leaves you with the square root of 2. Um, and this answer, 2 over the square root of 4, simplifies. Square root of 2 doesn't simplify, but the square root of 4 does. So this is a final answer. It's actually equal to this answer. We didn't change the answer. We just changed its form. But now this is a simplified answer because the radical is no longer in the denominator. Now, when you do this, what you want to do is multiply the radical you're trying to get rid of times itself. And that makes it go away because then it simplifies. But the radical will then pop up in the numerator. It always happens because you have to multiply to get it out of the denominator. It pops up in the numerator. It's fine to leave it in the numerator, not a big deal. So we're going to look at these examples here. We have 7 times the square root of 6. We're going to rationalize. I'm going to put it down here so we can see what happens. 7 over the square root of 6. I want to get rid of this square root of 6 in the denominator. When I multiply it times itself, I end up with the square root of 36, which I know I can simplify. But the rule for fractions, whatever you do in the denominator, you also have to do in the numerator. So I will also multiply the numerator times the square root of 6. That gives me 7 square root of 6. Remember the rules for multiplying. This one's on the outside. This one's on the inside. Outside times outside. Inside times inside. Gives you this. Now you simplify the denominator. So we still have 7 square root of 6 in the numerator, but the square root of 36 in the denominator is just 6. And this is your final simplified answer. We're going to do the same thing in this question. We have 3 over square root of 5x. I want to get rid of the square root of 5x, so I'm going to multiply it times itself. That will give me the square root of 25x squared. But whatever I do in the denominator, I also have to do in the numerator. When I multiply 3 times square root of 5x, I get 3 square root of 5x. And now I simplify the denominator. So I have still 3 square root of 5x in the numerator. The denominator is a perfect square. This should happen if you multiply times the right thing here. The square root of 25 is 5. The square root of x squared is x. So this is good. So we're going to do some practice problems here. We have 3 over the square root of 7. I want to get rid of the square root of 7, so I multiply it times itself. That makes the square root of 49. Whatever I do in the denominator, I also have to do in the numerator. 3 times the square root of 7 is 3 square root of 7. And now I simplify the denominator. So I have 3 square root of 7 in the numerator, the square root of 49 in the denominator. 4 square root of 11. I want to get rid of the square root of 11. So I'm going to multiply it times itself. That gives me the square root of 121. But I have to do the same thing in the numerator. When I multiply 4 times the square root of 11, I get 4 square root of 11. Now I simplify. The numerator stays the same.
the denominator is the square root of 121, which is 11. And this question, I want to get rid of the square root of 3. So I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator times the square root of 3. The square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 9. This one's a little bit different because they're both under the radical. So the square root of 2 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 6, which does not simplify, by the way, but the square root of 9 does. So we end up with square root of 6 over 3 because the square root of 9 is 3. In this question, I want to get rid of that square root of 2y, so I'm going to multiply numerator and denominator by the square root of 2y. That gives me square root of 4y squared in the denominator. In the numerator, 9 square root of 2y. I simplify. I have 9 square root of 2y over 2y. Don't make the mistake of trying to cancel these, though. Even though they're both 2y, this is the square root of 2y, and this is 2y. This square root should not, should not ever cancel. You can cover it up. If you try to reduce, only these pieces will reduce because the only thing a square root of 2y would be reducing with would be another square root, and you should have gotten all the square roots out of the denominator. Okay, so to rationalize this, I'm going to multiply times the square root of 10x, the numerator and the denominator. The square root of 10x times the square root of 10x is the square root of 100x squared. So that's the denominator. The numerator is 2x times the square root of 10x. Once I simplify the denominator, uh, the square root of 100 is 10. The square root of x squared is x. Now, in this case, these coefficients will reduce. 2 reduces with 10, and these x's will also reduce. So we're going to reduce... I'm actually just going to cancel those x's, and I'm going to reduce the 2 tenths to 1 fifth. So this is what I end up with. You don't even have to write the 1 if you don't want to. I mean, I've kept it there because it was easier for me. But you don't need a 1 coefficient. You could leave off the 1. All right, we're going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the square root of 5xy. That gives us in the denominator the square root of 25x squared, y squared. In the numerator, 6 square root of 5xy. And now I simplify. The numerator is 6 square root of 5xy. The denominator, square root of 25x squared, y squared, is 5xy. And there's nothing to reduce because this 6 doesn't reduce with any of this.